Welcome back. Unacceptable management practices that quote, expose customer funds to massive losses. That's what new FTX CEO, John J. Ray III will tell Congress tomorrow at a hearing about the collapse of FTX. Let's bring in New York Times reporter, finance reporter, Emily Flitter uh, to discuss this. And just an overview of what we can expect tomorrow. No SBF, we know that he's not going to appear there, uh, but what should we expect? Well, I think we're going to hear about the mismanagement of FTX's accounts and general corporate functioning. Um, and what I think we should all be looking for is a sign that uh, that the um, books are telling the story that we're beginning to hear in reporting, including from my colleagues and myself at the Times, about um, just how uh, intentionally mismanaged this company seems to have been. Hey Emily, what do you think about sort of the allegations in this Reuters report about how CZ told employees to use encrypted messaging, don't send emails, all those types of things. Does that look so like very incriminating from your point of view and also from the DOJ's? Well, CZ, the, uh, the founder and CEO of Binance, um, which is an F FTX rival, um, has definitely uh, spent a lot of the existence of FTX trying to avoid regulatory scrutiny. And he has talked openly about that. Um, it also um, seems to, to be of a piece uh, of what the industry had been doing in the lead up to 2021 and even this year, I mean, basically all of the exchanges are being looked at for violating anti-money laundering rules. And the purpose of crypto was to, in in large part, uh, have a system of financial transfers that was free from government oversight. Um, so that's not, that's not terribly surprising. I think we'll see what um, the Justice Department ends up uh, telling the rest of the world when they finish these investigations, including the one into Binance. And I, I have to ask you, with these hearings ongoing uh, at the same time that we have actual bankruptcy court proceedings, what, if anything, are, are we likely to learn out of this process? Um, and then what we take away from it, is that going to be something entirely different? I'm just wondering uh, what you think uh, the public can be gained uh, out of this. You know, this is unprecedented to a certain extent. I mean, we've had plenty of um, congressional hearings about companies blowing up and, um, but we're basically at a point where we're looking at an entire industry that is having a, a moment of reckoning. And it's not being shielded from um, sort of the consequences of its own actions, the way perhaps the traditional financial system has been shielded when its players do something wrong by the time that you get to be as big and as integrated as a traditional financial company, when something goes wrong, the um, regulators and investigators and just everybody involved in the process um, are all aware that with the wrong words, with the wrong um, framing of something in a public statement, they could cause a panic that could really hurt other people in the industry. I think that what we're seeing with crypto is there really aren't any holds barred um, in this inquiry because it, as as my colleagues in the media have been pointing out, doesn't matter as much. It doesn't. It's not going to bring down other parts of the global financial system. So I, I really think it's going to be exciting to see how far um, the lawmakers push and uh, what John J. Ray. Uh, you know, reveals. I, I think it's just going to be a really interesting thing that I, I'm going to watch like everybody else with, um, with great curiosity. Emily Flitter, thank you so much.